In the past, when you had an entity like this user and you wanted to keep track of the changes to its values, like this property, you had to create another table manually and keep track of the changes manually. But SQL Server 2016 came with a feature called Temporal Tables. Temporal Tables can keep track of your values automatically. And now EF Core just supports this. In this video, we'll see how to use Temporal Tables inside EF Core and how we can go through them. We are in Visual Studio 2022. And this is just a simple console application with .NET 6 and I've already installed Entity Framework Core and Entity Framework Core SQL Server. Inside program.cs, we delete the existing database and then we create it again. Then we instantiate a user and we add it to the database. We also add another user to the database. We wait a second. And then we change the value of the credit for the first user and save it. We wait another second and we change the value again. After that we wait a second and we remove the user. And finally we have a print method here. This will just print out the list of users that we passed to it. Now we want to keep track of these changes and we want to be able to retrieve these changes with Entity Framework. So let's go to the DB class. Inside our DB class, we want to override on model creating method. And inside this method, we use model builder dot entity of type user. And then we say dot to table. Using this method, you can change the name of the table. Like this. Let's say users. And then you can pass a lambda expression for configuring it. Since we don't want to change the name of the table, let's remove this. And here we use c.isTemporal. And now our table is temporal. We can customize it more than this, but let's first see what happens when a table becomes temporal. Let's save this and run the application. Now let's go to SQL Server and see the results. Now let's refresh this. Here's our database. And we open tables. We see users and then we see a system version added to it. And a clock is added also here. If we open this, we see another table here. Users history. Let's query the first rows from this one. As you can see, this is just a normal table just like we created but there are two other columns added here period start and period end let's also see what is in the user's history and as you can see this is just like the other table but there are many other rows here if we get back to the users table we can see period start has a value but period end has a weird value the end of time inside the main table this column will always be the last modified time. So the time that you change the value of this row is set to the period start. But each time you change the value, database will take a copy of your record, it will set the current time to the period end, and then it will add that copy to the history table. So any update or delete will be added here. Inside our code, we created a user with credit 200, then we changed it to 100, and then we changed it to 0, and then we deleted it. And these are just for ID1. The ID2 is still in the database. Now let's get back to EF Core and see how we can query these. Before getting into queries, let me just show you how you can configure this table. You can just pass another lambda expression here, and then you can say use history table to change the name for example you can say my users history you can also change the name of those two columns using o dot has period start and has period end for example let's say valid from and value 2 for this one 
okay this is how you configure this and since we don't have these two properties inside our user class these are just shadow properties if you want to know what are shadow properties check out my previous video about shadow properties the link to that video will appear now on the top corner of the video now let's go to program.cs now let's do some queries we first want to print them now here let's do our query say db.users if we only want the current records we can just do this and say dot to array or anything or use where clause and whatever you want but let's say we want the history table to be participated inside our query for that we use temporal and that has a few variants we use temporal all which is just a union between the current table and the history table and then let's just do another one let's say temporal as of using this one you pass a time and that time must be in UTC time and you get any record from the current table or the history table that is valid at that point in time it means it's a start period is before this time that we have passed and its end period is after the UTC time that we have sent it so let's send the time let's just get back up here and we say we want it before it was changed to 100 we use UTC now and let's pass it here and now let's do another query let's say we want to get the values between a time there are three variants for this one all of these three will take two parameters from and to the difference is the inclusion on the boundaries as you can see here inside Microsoft Docs for from we get no boundaries for between we include the lower boundary and for the contained in we get both boundaries so here let's just use between between now and current time date time dot utc now after any of these you can just add anything that you want for example where id is 1 and keep it in mind when you use temporal EF core will automatically add a no tracking to your queries so all of queries are just like this so let's just remove it and remember we can get our shadow properties just like this let's say db.users and let's say we want temporal it doesn't matter if it is temporal or not we want to select let's say users we want to get id and we want valid from which equals to we use ef dot property of type date time we pass the entity to it and then we say the name of the property that we want it was valid from and that's it here we get users let's just print out the first one let's say users 0 just add a two array here to fix the problem ok now let's run the application as you can see for temporal all we get all of the records no matter they are in the history table or in the current table for temporal as of we got the records that were valid at that point in time we had the first user with credit 200 as you can see here and we had the second user with credit 5000 here and for the time between temporal between we have got any records that were active between these two times only including the id1 
as you can see here and last but not least here we have a select that has the valid from inside it remember you can download the source code from my telegram channel if you learned anything from this video please drop a like and if you want to see more of these videos subscribe to my channel and enable the notification bell until next time adios amigos